I never thought that a regular jog could so radically change my life. Stumbling over a tree root in the park, I fell awkwardly and broke my leg. The doctor in the emergency room, shaking his head, gave me the good news. Mr. Reed, you'll have to spend at least a month at home. No strain bed rest. I sighed heavily, imagining how I would explain this to my boss. My wife Katie, standing nearby, squeezed my hand. Don't worry, Mike. We'll manage. But as soon as we returned home, problems began. Katie worked double shifts to pay the mortgage, and our daughter Emma was too young to help. I felt helpless and guilty. On the third day of my forced vacation, there was a knock at the door. Opening it, I saw my mother-in-law, Linda. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? She smiled, entering the house with a huge bag. Linda, what are you doing here? Katie called me, said you needed help. I came to look after you while she's at work. I felt a mixture of relief and awkwardness. Linda had always been kind and caring, but the thought of my mother-in-law taking care of me evoked a strange feeling. Thank you, but it's not necessary. I can manage on my own, I tried to object. Linda shook her head. Don't even think about it. You can't walk normally now. Someone has to cook, clean, and help you, and I'm here for just that. I realized that resistance was futile. Linda had always been a determined woman. The first few days passed without incident. Linda cooked, helped me move around the house, we watched TV and chatted. I started to get used to her constant presence. One morning, when she was helping me get to the bathroom, I suddenly realized how close she was. Her hair smelled of something floral, and her hand, embracing my waist, was warm and soft. I felt my heart start to beat faster. Is everything all right, Mike? Linda asked, noticing my confusion. Yes, yes, everything's fine, I mumbled, trying not to look her in the eyes. When she left, I stood for a long time, leaning on the sink, trying to understand what was happening to me. This was the beginning of something that I could neither foresee nor control. The days dragged on slowly. I tried to keep myself busy working on my laptop, but Linda's constant presence distracted me. I began to notice details I hadn't paid attention to before. How she tucks a strand of hair behind her ear. How her lips curve when she smiles. How smoothly she moves around the house. One evening, when Linda was helping me get into bed, she leaned over to adjust the pillow. Her face was so close to mine that I could feel her breath. For a moment, our eyes met, and I felt a shiver run through my body. Good night, Mike, she said quietly, straightening up. Good night, Linda, I replied, feeling my throat go dry. That night, I couldn't sleep for a long time. Thoughts of Linda haunted me, causing feelings of guilt and shame. I tried to think about Katie, about our family, but Linda's image kept appearing in my mind. The next morning, I decided to talk to Linda, hoping it would help me deal with these unwanted fantasies. Linda, I really appreciate your help, but maybe you should go home. I'm feeling better already. I started at breakfast. She looked at me in surprise. Mike, you still can't walk properly. Who will take care of you? I'll manage. Really, I insisted. Linda frowned. Is something wrong? Did I do something wrong? I felt myself blushing. No, no, everything's fine. It's just... I don't want to be a burden. Nonsense, she cut me off. Your family, and I'll stay here until you get better. I nodded, not knowing what else to say. Part of me was disappointed that she stayed, and another part was glad about it. Days went by, and my condition only worsened. Every touch from Linda, every glance from her caused a storm of emotions in me. I began to notice that she started dressing more openly. Tight t-shirts, shorts revealing her slender legs, or was it just my imagination? One day, when she was helping me take a shower, which in itself was a test of my willpower, the towel slipped off her shoulder, revealing smooth skin. I froze, unable to look away. Oops, she said, adjusting the towel. Did I imagine it, or did she hold her gaze on my face a little longer than usual? Is everything all right? Linda asked with a slight smile. Yes, yes, I mumbled, feeling the color rising to my face. Leaving the bathroom, I sat on the bed for a long time, trying to calm down. What's happening to me? And what the hell is going on with Linda? Two weeks had passed since the beginning of my home confinement. The tension between Linda and me grew with each day. I tried to keep my distance, but in a small house it was practically impossible. One evening we were watching a movie. Linda was sitting next to me on the couch, and I could feel the warmth of her body. Suddenly, she put her hand on my knee. Are you comfortable? Should I bring a pillow? I flinched at her touch. No, everything's fine, thank you. She didn't remove her hand immediately, and I felt my heart start to beat faster. 
When she finally pulled away, I exhaled with relief. And disappointment? The next day, when Linda was helping me with leg exercises prescribed by the doctor, she leaned so close to me that I could smell her shampoo. Mike, she said quietly, you've been tense lately. Is everything okay? I looked into her eyes and saw, what, concern or something else? Everything's fine, I lied. I'm just tired of this forced inaction. Linda smiled. I understand. Maybe you need to relax. I can give you a massage. I felt my breath catch. No, thank you. I, I'd better sleep. She nodded, but I thought I saw a disappointment flash in her eyes. At night, I couldn't sleep for a long time, thinking about the situation. Is Linda really flirting with me? Or is it all my imagination, distorted by forced proximity and inaction? And what the hell do I myself feel about all this? The next morning, I decided to talk to Katie on the phone. Maybe if I heard my wife's voice, it would help me come to my senses. Hi, honey, Katie said. How are you there? Is mom taking good care of you? I felt a pang of guilt. Yes, everything's fine. Linda is very caring. I'm so glad, Katie said. You know, I think I can take a vacation next week. I'll come home, help you. I should have been happy about this news, but instead I felt a strange disappointment. What's wrong with me? That's, that's great, dear, I forced out. After the conversation, I sat staring into space. I needed to get my thoughts in order before Katie's arrival. But how to do that when Linda is constantly around, when her every movement, every glance causes a storm of emotions in me? I didn't know how much longer I could withstand this tension. Something had to happen, and I was afraid that this something could destroy my family. The day before Katie's arrival started as usual. Linda helped me get out of bed and walk to the bathroom. But something in the air was different. The tension that had been building all this time seemed to have reached its peak. After breakfast, Linda offered to help me with leg exercises. We settled in the living room and she began to gently massage my injured leg. How does it feel? She asked, looking into my eyes. Fine, I replied, trying not to pay attention to the warmth of her hands. Suddenly, Linda stopped and took a deep breath. Mike, we need to talk. My heart beat faster. About what? About us. About what's been happening these past few weeks. I felt the color rising to my face. I don't know what you mean. Linda shook her head. Stop it, Mike. You know perfectly well this tension between us. I can't pretend I don't notice it anymore. I was silent, not knowing what to say. Part of me wanted to deny everything. Another part, to confess my feelings. Linda, I... I began, but she interrupted me. I know you're married to my daughter. I know this is wrong, but I can't stop thinking about you, Mike. Her words hit me like lightning. All my suspicions, all my fantasies suddenly became reality. Me too, I whispered, not believing I was saying it out loud. I can't stop thinking about you either. Linda moved closer. I could feel her breath on my face. Our lips were inches apart. Everything inside me screamed that this was wrong, but I couldn't resist. And at that moment, the sound of the front door opening was heard. Mike, Mom, I'm home! Katie's voice was like a bucket of cold water poured over us. We jumped apart as if scalded. Linda quickly stood up and walked to the window, while I tried to assume as casual a pose as possible. Katie entered the room with a beaming smile. Surprise! I managed to get away a day early. I felt my heart pounding somewhere in my throat. Katie, how, how wonderful! Linda turned from the window, a forced smile on her face. Darling, we didn't expect you so early. Katie came over to me and kissed me on the cheek. I felt a pang of guilt, remembering that a few seconds ago I was ready to kiss her mother. I missed you so much, Katie said, hugging me. How are you here? Has mom been taking good care of you? I looked at Linda, who was carefully avoiding my gaze. Yes, your mom. She's been very caring, Katie smiled. I knew it. Mom, thank you so much. Now I can take care of Mike myself. Linda nodded. Of course, dear. I think it's time for me to pack up and go home. Already? Why don't you stay for dinner? Katie suggested. No, no, Linda quickly replied. I have things to do at home. I'd better go. She quickly gathered her things and saying goodbye left. I watched the door close behind her, feeling a strange mixture of relief and regret. Katie sat down next to me on the couch. Well, tell me, how have you been without me? I tried to smile. Everything's fine. Just missed you. All evening I tried to act normal answered Katie's questions, listened to her stories about work. But my thoughts kept returning to what had almost happened with Linda. At night, lying in bed next to my wife, I couldn't sleep for a long time. Guilt was gnawing at me from the inside. 
How could I betray Katie's trust? And what should I do now with these feelings for Linda? A week had passed since Katie returned home. My leg was gradually healing, and I could already walk a little without assistance. But the emotional wounds seemed to only deepen. Every time Katie hugged me or told me how much she loved me, I felt like the last scoundrel. I couldn't stop thinking about Linda, about that moment when we were so close to crossing the line. One evening, as Katie and I were watching TV, she suddenly asked, Mike, is everything okay with you? You've been distant lately. I felt my mouth go dry. Everything's fine. I'm just tired of this forced idleness. Katie looked at me intently. Are you sure that's all it is? You know, Mom's been acting strange lately, too. You didn't have a fight while I was away, did you? I nearly choked. No, of course not. Everything was fine. Hmm, Katie frowned. It's just that she stopped calling, doesn't ask about you. That's not like her. I shrugged, not knowing what to say. Inside, I tensed at the thought that Linda's and my behavior might arouse Katie's suspicions. The next day, I decided that I needed to talk to Linda. I couldn't live in this suspended state anymore. Waiting until Katie left for work, I dialed Linda's number. Hello? Her voice sounded tense. Linda, it's me. We need to talk. There was a pause. I don't think that's a good idea, Mike. Please, I insisted. We can't just pretend nothing happened. She sighed. All right, I'll come over in an hour. That hour dragged on endlessly. When the doorbell rang, I hobbled to it with difficulty leaning on my cane. Linda looked tired and tense. We sat in the living room, maintaining distance from each other. Mike, she began. What happened? It was a mistake. We shouldn't have let it go so far. I nodded. I know, but what do we do now? I can't stop thinking about you, Linda. She shook her head. We have to. For Katie's sake, for our family's sake. What we feel, it's not real. It's just the result of forced proximity. Stress from your injury. I wanted to object, to say that my feelings were real, but I understood that she was right. We couldn't destroy our family because of a fleeting attraction. You're right, I finally said. But how are we going to act now? Katie has already noticed that something's wrong. Linda took a deep breath. We have to act normal, pretend that nothing happened. With time, maybe these feelings will pass. I nodded, feeling a mixture of relief and disappointment. We talked a bit more, discussing how we would behave from now on, and Linda left. In the evening, when Katie returned from work, I tried to be more open and attentive to her. We cooked dinner together, laughed at old jokes, and although part of me was still thinking about Linda, I understood that I had made the right choice. A few days later, Linda came over for dinner. She and I behaved as usual, joked, discussed news. Katie seemed glad that everything had returned to normal, but when Linda was leaving, our eyes met for a moment. And at that moment, I realized that although we had made the right decision, those feelings, those forbidden fantasies, would forever remain a part of us. A secret we would keep. A reminder of how thin the line is between family happiness and forbidden passion. Closing the door behind Linda, I returned to Katie, hugged her, and kissed her. At that moment, I vowed to myself that I would do everything possible to preserve our family, our happiness because sometimes the most important victories are victories over oneself. Did you like this story? Let us know in the comments what you liked. Subscribe to our storytelling podcast. Also, don't forget to like and ring the bell so you don't miss more interesting stories. See you soon.